Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game between Shirish van Maralak Shikari and none other than Vasily Ivanchuk. Now, uh, chances are you've already seen this game as it's uh, been considered to be uh, quite an upset. Uh, but I actually was not going to show this game for two reasons, but I'm going to get back to those two reasons at the end of the video, hopefully, if I don't, uh, if I don't forget. Now, it's a, it's a game from round one of the... Uh, Sunway Sidgis International Chess Tournament. Uh, this is the fifth edition of the tournament and there are a lot of very strong players in this tournament. Uh, this is the resort where the tournament is taking place, so let's just check that out. Uh, it's a really huge photo, so I'm gonna have to use some special effects and uh, by that uh, I mean I'm gonna drag the photo from right to left so you can see the entire thing. This is the hotel where they're playing uh, and this is the nice beach. There you can see the waves and, and the sand and everything. So I always say, you know, uh, if you become a really good chess player, you will be able to visit uh, places like these and, and play chess. You know, there is nothing better than that. Uh, and also, uh, here we have a very nice photo of the two gentlemen. Uh, there it is. It's from the official website uh, of the uh, San Luis Irgis International Chess Festival. Uh, I will put a lot of useful links in the description below there to their Twitter feed, to their uh, official website and uh, a lot of interesting uh, stuff, interviews and so on. Uh, so if I will cover any more uh, games from this event, you can enjoy everything as well. Now, I couldn't find uh, any good photos of the of young uh, Shrishwan Maralak Shikari. Uh, I used this one, but it's actually from a video from Chessbase India's YouTube channel. So I will put a link to that video in the description as well, as there you can learn uh, a bit more about this young gentleman. Uh, because at the beginning of, uh, beginning of this year, he was rated some uh, 2050, and uh, by now he's already rated 2250 and he won all of that uh, rating in one tournament he played uh, uh, six and a half out of seven uh, uh, in the commonwealth championship and he really crushed it so quite uh, you know quite a rising star uh, <laughs> that faces Ivanchuk here so without further ado let's check out the game and uh, why this game is is so important so let's see it. Uh, young Shrishwan has the white pieces and he opens with d4. And here Ivanchuk goes for c5. This is the Benoni, but this is the old Benoni defense. Uh, so uh, Shrishwan simply uh, proceeds with the d5 like it was a regular Benoni. And this is the most common reply. Uh, in the old days you could capture on c5, you know, uh, <laughs> get... Uh, I lose the control of the center, uh, but nowadays that's not really some some appealing. Uh, you, you could even go b6 and go for the uh, Comoran Gambit, and then after captures, captures, you will have complete control uh, of the center. Black will even attack it with bishop to b7, and it will have a it will be a very nice game, of course. But uh, for modern taste, not really. Uh, but okay, d5 with knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to c3. We have the uh, main line of the Benoni. Captures, captures. We have d6. With this is still um, in the waters of the main line. Uh, e4, g6, uh, f4. Uh, this is the uh, pawn storm variation of the of the Benoni. Bishop to g7. And now you might uh, be thinking, okay, but what if uh, white pushes e5 here? That's what I was always thinking when I was playing black in positions like these. Uh, it's not really a problem for black. You can simply go back with the knight. And it seems that uh, the pawn chain is overextended. The pawn is now attacked three times. And uh, while there are some forced variations that allow white to play this, if you if you learn them or if you if if you're playing a playing in a classical game, uh, you will most likely be able to, to fend off this attack. Uh, but okay, in this game, bishop to b5 was played. This comes with check, and now comes knight f to d7. Well, you can block with both bishop uh, and the knight. Uh, it's kind of a Kind of a thing in the Benoni, whenever this bishop to b5 check comes, you usually want to block with this knight. Because after this bishop to b5, uh, there could be some ideas with e5. So better not make this knight a target. And by doing this, you have a very nice control of the e5 square. And okay, knight to f3 with a6. Uh, Ivanchuk immediately questions what you want to do with the bishop. Trade it for the knight. Of course, you don't want to do that. So uh, you have to go back. And now b5. So Ivanchuk is having a very nice game. Uh, as black in the Benoni, he will push c4 at some point, this knight uh, will come to c5, or if white pushes f5, then even e5 will be a very nice square for the knight, he will castle, he has a very nice bishop on g7, uh, all is well for black. Uh, so we have castles, castles, king to h1, a nice prophylactic move, after c4 comes, uh, you don't want to allow queen to b6 or bishop to d4 at some point to come with checks, so a very useful move. Uh, and now rook to e8. And this has all been played before, uh, plenty of times. I, uh, there are over 200 games in the database from this position. 
uh, we have a3, uh, c4 now, pushing the bishop back, creating a nice square for the knight on c5, the bishop to c2, and now comes knight to c5. And here, uh, there are uh, some games in the database that uh, had this exact same position. In some of them, f5 was played, this is the most common move here. Uh, in one of them, e5 was played, where white won a nice game, but black blundered. And uh, also a known move here was a bishop to e3. Uh, but here, young Shrishwan uh, makes a move that was uh, not played before, so... Uh, and uh, e5 and f5 are the top engine recommendations. The, the move uh, Shrishwan played here is knight to d4, and it's actually the third move recommended by the engine. So I'm very interested, is this uh, still in the, in the lines of uh, uh, this young gentleman's preparation, or is this now, uh, you know, a move, uh, an original creative move uh, that, that was created over the board? Uh, I have no idea, but uh, you'll see what he had in mind. So knight to d4, and from this position we have a completely new game. Uh, and Ivanchuk finds a very nice uh, idea here. He plays bishop to g4, offers his light square bishop for this knight on d4. The knight on d4 is a very strong piece. Uh, black can't really develop, you have to keep an eye on c6, you don't want to allow something like knight to c6. Uh, also, it's a, it's a really a nice centralized piece, you just don't want to give up your dark square bishop to get rid of it. And uh, your light square bishop, on the other hand, is a pretty useless piece. So why not trade it? Uh, we have queen captures, uh, Shrishwan goes for it, we have bishop captures on d4, and now comes f5. And okay, now the e5 square has been made available for black, so we have knight b to d7, this knight is now at some point coming to e5, or maybe f6, uh, depending on what white plays. Uh, f captures on g6, f captures on g6, and now comes e5. And okay, uh, this is move 19, this is now the critical moment of the game. Uh, you can see that white really plays uh, with an attacking style. Uh, like I said, I will put a link in the description below uh, to an interview with Young Shrishwan uh, from January 2018. Uh, feel free to check it out. It's really... Uh, you, you definitely want to learn uh, more about this young fellow as I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing much more of him. So e5, a very nice move, releasing the bishop here. Now the bishop is eyeing this g6 pawn, but also the dark square bishop is ready to jump to h6. So here, uh, Ivanchuk's spidey sense doesn't uh, start tingling, and that is a problem. Here, uh, you want to capture on c3. After you capture, pawn captures, knight captures here. Uh, the queen is under attack, uh, you have to move the queen, and after queen to g3, it's very hard to see what white had in mind after this e5 move. After the knight blocks here, uh, you will either capture this bishop, this bishop is now blocked, the knight is uh, a monster on d3, black is having a very an, an excellent game here. And on the other hand, uh, you could try some tricks, for example, after b bishop captures on c3, uh, you could try the intermediate uh, bishop captures on g6 and uh, say that, okay, that, that bishop captures on c3 move wasn't very good, uh, but it doesn't work, uh, because now, when the bishop is here, you have knight captures on e5, and this knight to e5 uh, is the main defensive idea of Ivanchuk in this position. Now, the queen is under attack and also the bishop, so here you have to give a double check, uh, knight captures on h7, king captures on h7, but now, after queen to h3 check, king to g8, now queen to g3 check, here you will play knight to g4. You uh, Black is hoping that white will grab the knight so you can bring the bishop back to g7 as the bishop will be a much more useful defensive piece. Uh, but here b captures on c3 will be played and now queen to d7, defending the knight. And after h3, yes, white will win that knight back, but after knight e4 attacking the queen, uh, captures, captures, and now after the queen is captured, black has queen uh, knight to g3 check. King g1, knight captures, uh, king captures, and you are left... Uh, with, a, with two rooks against uh, a rook and a bishop. Uh, white would be a pawn up, but it's a double g pawn. Uh, basically, black would be would have an inning, a winning endgame here. Uh, so, after this e5 move, Ivanchuk has all the resources needed to stop this, but his spidey sense doesn't, uh, <laughs> doesn't go tingling. Uh, and he plays bishop captures on e5. He wants to keep his dark square bishop to go back to g7. Uh, you don't want this bishop coming to h6. Uh, it could be a problem, but now, as we've already mentioned, the main defensive idea Black had was bringing this knight to e5. From there, it would attack the queen and also protect the g6 pawn. Here, Ivanchuk's bishop is on e5, so knight e5 will no longer be possible. And here, young Shrishwan takes this opportunity and plays bishop captures on g6. And now, uh, Ivanchuk could still hope uh, to, to survive this after, after something like rook to f8, bishop to f5 check. 
Uh, king to h8, maybe now you can still play this, maybe the knight can come to f6, maybe you can use the same open g file uh, to attack white here, perhaps black would still have chances. Uh, but Ivanchuk boldly captured the bishop. h captures on g6, and now comes queen captures on g6. Uh, bishop back to g7, Ivanchuk saw all of this, and uh, most likely he saw everything that follows, because queen to f7 was played, king to h8, and here most likely Ivanchuk saw... Uh, that here you can't play rook to f3 to, to finish the game, uh, because here <laughs> rook to e1 uh, simply doesn't work. I mean, I mean uh, uh, rook to f3 doesn't work because of rook to e1. You have to bring the rook back, uh, and now after queen to h4, you, you guard the rook, you uh, defend the h5 square, and also the other rook is now ready to enter the game. Ivanchuk would be winning here. Uh, but he missed one idea from young Shrishwan, so feel free to pause the video here and try to find the idea uh, Chucky missed. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds, uh, you know, if you wanna, if you want to give it a go. Uh, so, uh, okay, for those of you who were able uh, to do it, congratulations, you have just uh, found an idea of Vas the great Vasily Ivanchuk missed over the board. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the strong move is actually queen to h5 check. And uh, it's a really nice idea. You push the king back, but you also protect the g5 square, which is very important. King g8, and now comes bishop to g5. Now, this comes with an attack on the queen, so you're not wasting any time here. Bishop to g5 is played, and also now you've connected rooks. So now, rook to f3 will be a very strong resource, as now the other rook is controlling the e1 square. And here, uh, uh, Ivanchuk played uh, queen to c8, but it's no better to block with the rook, rook e7. Uh, here, simply queen to h4, you go for the rook, knight f6 uh, blocks, captures, captures, and captures, and here you will not be able to, to fend off everything white is ready to throw at you. This rook is coming to f1, rook g6 is an idea. Uh, black will not be able to survive this. So, Ivanchuk tried queen to c8, but now comes queen to f7 check, king to h8, and now that the rooks are connected, the same idea applies. So, uh, rook to f4. Uh, and here there is no defense uh, against uh, rook to h4, uh, checkmate will, will soon follow. Uh, so, I mean, you could try something, uh, but nothing really works. If you try to bring the knight back into the defense with knight to f6, you're still getting bishop captures here. There's, there's really, really nothing to do here. Bishop captures, and uh, still, queen captures on f6, again, you're getting just, just hammered here. Rook is coming to h4. Uh, check king g8, rook h8, uh, only only one of the variations that work. Uh, but yeah, uh, queen to f7, king moves, and now rook f4, uh, the 26th move, so really we can call this a modern miniature, and a brilliant one at that. Uh, now, uh, unto those two reasons that I've already mentioned, uh, why I wasn't going to show this game, because I, I decided not to show it be before ever seeing the game. Uh, I, I've seen everyone posting uh, Ivanchuk, uh, the upset of the tournament already in round one, but Ivanchuk has been losing uh, a lot of games lately and he's basically been throwing away his rating uh, to, to lower rated players and uh, I was like, yeah, I mean, I'd be more impressed with an upset where, where Ivanchuk would uh, convincingly win a game against a strong player. Uh, because something lately just doesn't work for him. I, I personally think he's playing too much chess. Uh, I think Ivanchuk is playing like... Uh, eight leagues or something like that. He's constantly traveling, constantly playing chess, and uh, th that's simply not possible for a chess player. Uh, I don't think it's his age. He's uh, uh, the, the exact same age as Anand. He's 49, so I, I don't think that would be such a problem. Uh, but... Uh, uh, then I saw the game, and then I saw that uh, young Shrifan Maralakshikari actually played a brilliant attacking game, that it wasn't some uh, big blunder by Ivanchuk, so I was uh, very happy uh, for, for the young player. Uh, I mean, really a vicious attack. After this e5, if you don't realize what the dangers of this are, and Ivanchuk really missed only a tiny bit of this uh, variation that makes the attack possible, but still, it, it is a, a, a brilliancy and should be regarded as such. So yeah, uh, that's uh, basically it. Uh, once again, do check out the interview with uh, the young gentleman. Uh, it will be the first thing you will see in the description below. Uh, really, it, it, their video only has 900 views, so really should, should uh, do better than that. Uh, and I did use their photo, so it would only be fair. Uh, if you have the time. Uh, but yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Christian, uh, Christian Bokove, uh, Arthur Clay, 
uh, Archer Clay, uh, Prashant Sharma, and uh, John Hetlinger for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully, with some more interesting content. Thank you all, and I'll see you soon.